Maple Leafs win by a score of 5-3 to three over the Boston Bruins, and with it moved nine points ahead of the Detroit Red Wings, solidifying their hold on fourth spot. We now turn our attention to the game April 1st, 1967, and by now they have really taken hold of fourth spot. In fact, they have their sights set on the New York Rangers, who are just one point ahead of them, entrenched in third place in the original six standings. And speaking of original six, this is the last year for those situations to be in the National Hockey League before expansion, and Foster Hewitt is well aware of it. Well, tonight marks a milestone because it's the last game of the season, and next year the NHL Foster Hewitt will not be the same. It'll be different because it'll be a new league. It'll be quite different. Foster, what about the milestones through the years of the NHL? Let's think of some of those through the last five decades. Well, as you know, uh, the NHL started in 1917, and I think uh, one of the interesting points was the fact that the team that won the uh, Stanley Cup that year, uh, the entire salary list was less than the uh, salary earned by one hockey player today. Yeah, they, so it shows you the high cost of living. Mm -hmm. Well, was the NHL as big as the amateurs in those days? No, no. Uh, practically, the, uh, junior, the uh, junior and senior OHA teams and the Canadian Amateur Hockey Association teams were outstanding at that time. They had the cream of the crop, and uh, that would be in the 20s. Mm -hmm. uh, for instance, uh, there were teams such as the Winnipeg Falcons and the uh, Toronto Granites and the Varsity Grads. They were tremendous hockey teams that could be as good as any good NHL club. Mm -hmm. But I think the uh, NHL became of age in the 30s, the late mm -hmm. 20s and the 30s. Mm -hmm. And in the uh, period of the 30s, I don't think the NHL was ever stronger than it was in that 10-year period. Mm -hmm. I think they had tremendous hockey players there. They still have good hockey players, but they don't have as many now. Uh, in fact, uh, in those days, we talked of lines all the time. We never talked of individuals. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was always the Croak line and uh, the Kid line and the Mosaico-Bentley line mm -hmm. and uh, Abel, uh, Howell, and Lindsay. Mm -hmm. And uh, you talked in threes, not in ones. Mm -hmm. I think that's the difference. Did the rules at all have anything to do with that? Was it easier or was it easier for a line to be created as a personality? say, because of the rules? I don't think so. I think it was just uh, an excess of quality. Mm -hmm. And uh, sure, the uh, rules have changed our game tremendously, and they've speeded it up. Uh, they've made a different game of it. It's a, it's a form of, uh, like, field lacrosse changed into box lacrosse. You, they concentrate all the action, and, and head manning the puck uh, eliminated a lot of the uh, need for stick handling, although there are still good stick handlers in the league. Mm -hmm but it cut down the number of them. Mm -hmm. And uh, it changed our whole game. So therefore, when you pick stars, you have to remember that. Uh, and it isn't fair, really, to pick a star team when you've picked them in various eras mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. Foster, thinking of the players off the ice, and of course you've known them for quite a few decades now, the personalities of a hockey player of a few decades ago different than the personalities of the players of today? I think they had more fun. Uh, I don't know uh, just why. Perhaps I was younger then, mm -hmm. and uh, I was more prone to have fun. Mm -hmm. But uh, it seemed to me that when you travel with the uh, various teams, particularly the Maple Leafs, they were always uh, uh, a group of uh, pranksters, and they were always doing tricks on each other, and they were all funny tricks. Mm -hmm. uh, whereas now, it's a cut and dried business, which is the way it should be, I guess. But I imagine the amount of money at stake has, has changed that, uh, that fun to strict business. I suppose television has changed it too. A young man wants to make a good impression himself. When well, he's I on think camera so. and he doesn't want to be silly doing something else. Uh, that's right, except that I don't think anything really silly was done in those days. Mm -hmm. It was all among themselves. Mm -hmm. What about fights, Foster? We sometimes get awfully upset about fights these days in modern day hockey. But were they rather fights of today anything like the fights of say 20 years ago? I don't think so. I, I'd call these skirmishes. Uh, <laughs> uh, in those days, they really fought, and, uh, and they cut each other up pretty well. I, I would say that uh, the game was much rougher in the 30s and the 40s, mm -hmm. and uh, there's no question in my mind that uh, players then were really tougher. Mm -hmm. But I think that's because now we're skating more. Mm -hmm. Faster. Faster. Yeah, much faster. Faster, if you had to pick an all-time all-star team, who would you pick? 
Well, as I say, I'd have to qualify it. Uh, mm -hmm. You can always have a lot of excuses. You need them. <laughs> but uh, I'd be inclined to pick Chuck Gardner uh, of uh, the Chicago Blackhawks as my top goalkeeper. And he was not only a great goalkeeper, but he was uh, quite a clown on the ice and added a lot of color. What could a goaler do to add color? Oh, well, when they'd throw hats on the ice, he'd pick one up. And I remember in one playoff game, he wore it all through the last period. <laughs> And uh, he'd even uh, duck shots and have the puck hit his hat. Really? So he was quite yeah. a, he was pretty good on at On defense? Who on defense would you Well, think? I, I don't think there's anybody ever any better than Eddie Shore mm -hmm. uh, for a number of reasons. Mm -hmm. uh, Eddie Gerard would be my second choice from Ottawa. Mm -hmm. Left wing? Then, uh, well, left wing, you certainly have Joliet, uh, Harvey Jackson, Mm -hmm. Ted Lindsay, mm -hmm. and of course, lately, Bobby Hull. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think Bobby Hull perhaps has been in the league long enough mm -hmm. to get that uh, national recognition. Before of we run out of time, what about center and right wing? Well, uh, Bill Cowley, I think, was a top-notch center place but player, but Howie Morenz, I thought, mm -hmm. would have to take and it. right wing? Well, of course, you go to Richard and uh, Howell. Mm -hmm. uh, let me stop there, I think. Well, thank you very much, Foster, for reminiscing on the last few decades of the National Hockey League with a new era staring us in the face. This is Molten Canadian Maple Leaf Classics on Leafs TV. Mike Walton, still our guest as we uh, look ahead now to April 1st, 1967. It's the last weekend of the regular season, and it is a situation where original six hockey is over. Now, you've just come up from Rochester, so I'm sure that there are an awful lot of guys down there in the American Hockey League who are just excited as hell about the fact that this league is going to double in size. Well, I had the opportunity to play in the American Hockey League at the time, and uh, they had six teams down there. And really, uh, when they talked about expansion, uh, of course, it could never happen. But the American Hockey League teams, they had so many good players in that league and the cities themselves that uh, they could have just expanded with, to the American Hockey League. Of course, for other reasons, uh, they picked different spots, but uh, the players they were down uh, were great hockey players. And they had to be excited knowing that maybe they were going to get uh, their chance to play in the NHL? Uh, a, lot of them, uh, a lot of them did, but more so I think it opened up for the younger players coming up because uh, a lot of the players in the, in, the, in the American Hockey League were players that basically had already played in the National Hockey League and were at the end of their careers and they were older too. When we come back, second and third period of play-by-play -play action from Maple Leaf Gardens because it is April 1st, 1967, the Leafs and the Rangers. This is Molson Canadian Maple Leaf Classics on Leafs TV. Marcel Cronobo coming out of his own zone with Larry Jeffrey who took the pass over the line. Nielsen covers him, let him around. Nielsen a check by Jeffrey. Back to Larry Hillman, there's his shot, and that's the line of the corner. Out for Jimmy Nielsen in his own blue line to center. He takes a long shot, back by Bauer, scoops over to the corner. It pokes in the blue line, Howell couldn't keep it in, and Wendell got away from him somehow. Howell overstakes the puck again, Kelly gets a chance for Ellis, one man back, Kelly for Ellis, Ellis shot and right Kelly keeps it in, Jeffrey trying to center it for Ellis and it's Hatfield. Up for Gilbert, he stopped. Arnie Brown. Off the boards to Hatfield. Hatfield at his own blue line, up to center right. Here goes his shot, Bauer stopped that. Around to Ellis. He let it go to center, Kelly after it, and that's offside. Another one of those passes from inside the blue line over the checkered line at center. There's Red Kelly uh, going off for a breather. That was quite a shot, Bill, that Vic Hadfield took. He's always been a good shooter, but he's using that Bobby Hull-type hockey stick now, and he seems to be getting just a little more steam behind his shot. That's good going in out there with Donnie Marshall and Bob Nevin. Peter Stamkowski, Bob Pulford, and Jim Papham. Stanley out on the defense now with Horton. Stanley. Lost it. Nevin gets over the line. Tried to go around, and Stanley flips it into the corner. Lost it. Lost it again. Horton off the boards, and here comes Stamkowski, Pulford, and Papham. 
They're over the line, closing in. Papin takes a shot. He hit Ernie Brown. And it's Nevin coming back. Up the center right, Ernie Brown over the blue line. It's cleared right in front of Nevin. It's shot. Oh, and Bauer made a save on it. Well, he got the arm out there. Bauer's good left arm saved the Leafs a goal on that one as Nevin moved in close. Here's the play developing. Watch closely now as there's the pass right on the stick and Bauer gets it on the arm. I don't think he got it just above the glove or about the elbow, Bill. Inside the elbow, he made that save. Well, he's just been in the right spot every time so far, Brian. And the Rangers have done everything but score. There's a stop action of it. And it looks from here as if it definitely was right where you said it was. There's another shot to time. Comes back to Nielsen. There's a shot. It's right in front of the net. Jeffrey on a shot, and Bauer stopped that. From point blank range. Dion to Mahavlin. Run down the line front. The man back. The fin is closing in. Dion shoots. Mahavlin the rebound. Hit the side of the net. Back for Jeffrey on. A long shot. Bauer stopped it. Oh, a pretty play by the lead. They go in front two to nothing. Watch it develop now. Armstrong leads it for Hillman. The return pass to Armstrong. Watch this great pass by Hillman and right through. Larry Hillman taking that pass from Armstrong, laying it right on Mahovlich to stick, and Mahovlich putting it right between the legs of Jackman. Toronto 17 for Frank Mahovlich. 27, Mahovlich. Assist number two, Larry Hillman, and number 10, Armstrong. Time 5.44. That goal reaches into the Rangers zone again. Howell touched it and it's called for icing. 14.05 remaining in the second period. Out of Maple Leafs, two. New York Rangers, nothing. Well, you have to give Hillman full marks on that, Bill, because the normal tendency for a defenseman on a drop pass is to right. shoot. But he didn't waste a split second. He got it right over to Mahava, who was freaking in in the clear. Kelly Ellis, Jeffrey, Martin and Stanley. Kelly checked at the blue line. Curtain back takes the shot and goes to Kelly. Kelly off the board, right to Hatfield of the Ranger. Hatfield covered by Kelly. It goes to Horton, and Horton pulls out. Coming up the center. For Jeffrey, and that one failed to click. Stanley waiting for his teammates to get on side, and he had to flick it, and he flicked it into the crowd. <laughs> Ellis went over to say something to Coach Punch Imlac, and now he comes back out on the right side. Hadfield, curtain back. Jill Bear, Ernie Brown, and Harry Howell. Howell coming up. A pass to Hadfield. Ellis is given a bump. Kelly is checked. And Ellis gets the puck into the Ranger zone, and it's Howell back for it. Harry Howell behind the Ranger goal. There's his pass to Kirtenbeck, number 25. Here he comes. He's leading a four-man rush. Stopped by Horton. Ellis missed it. Gets it again, coming up over the line, and he shot it over the blue line. Ernie Brown to Howell. Kelly was covered. Ellis then for Jeffrey and Kelly. Great and back, coming back for New York with Hatfield. Here comes the shot, and that's high over top of the net. Kelly for Jeffrey. One man back. Jeffrey over the blue line. Turn. Still has it. For Samkowski into the corner. Samkowski centered it right in front of the net. Here's Papa. He shoots. Oh, and Jackman came out of nowhere to grab that one with his left hand. He left his stick and everything. Well, here we have a mix up developing now as Papin and Kurtenback are in there. Howell moves in along with Hadfield and Nielsen. And now Samkowski gets his stick up there for a moment. We thought we'd have some fireworks here after Papin. Let a Sizzler go to Jackman gloved and then released and was able to gather into his body. This game is coming to you from Maple Leaf Gardens in Toronto.
Penalties have been handed up to Stankowski and Curtin back for that practice that started just after the whistle. Here are the penalties. Number 25, Curtin back. Two minutes for Ruffy. Toronto penalty to number 12, Stankowski. Two minutes for Ruffy. The time, 7.29. 7.29, roughing penalty. Curtin back, Stankowski. The teams are five aside. Marshall Nevin. Wayne Hellman and Jimmy Nielsen shot into the leaf zone and Fulford is out there with Pappen, Larry Hellman and Marcel Pronovo. Went over Fulford's stick, Larry Hellman to Pappen. Over the line for Larry Hellman and he was checked by Jimmy Nielsen. Nielsen having difficulty, let's Donnie Marshall try it. To Nielsen, back to Wayne Hellman. Wayne Hellman coming up the center. Took a flip shot. That bounce. That was just wide. It played out Pulford. Marshall gets it back to Wayne Hellman. Right off the board. Right to Pulford. Pulford couldn't get out. Marcel Cronovo by two. Pulford coming up the center ice with Pappen. Pulford over the line. Still has it. Finally, Nielsen gives him a shove. Pappen is cruising in front of the net. And Bob Nevin comes back for New York. Up to center ice. Takes a shot. Marcel Pronovo stopped him. A pass for Keon. Keon going over the blue line. There's his shot. Makes another one. Mahavlik the rebound. In front for Keon. Back for Mahavlik. In front of the defense. Knocked off to the side. Bob Nevin. Nevin gets away from Mahavlik. Up to Arnie Brown. Over the leaf line, a pass for Nevin goes to the corner. Larry Hillman up with it, number two. A long pass from a hoblet that flex into the Rangers zone and it's Howell. Now Stemkowski and Curtin back are on the ice. Teams are at full strength. Armstrong replaces Stemkowski. Fleming out there. Takes a long shot. That's why. Armstrong is to Stanley. Stanley flicks it down the ice. Narnie Brown's going back for it. Keon is now replaced by Kelly as the Leafs are changing rather quickly. Kelly trying to go over the line. He did the jump but it was outside. Well, it's been a rough week for the New York Rangers, Bill. There's Wayne Hillman. His car was demolished on Thursday in an accident, and Wayne's wife was uh, slightly injured. Wayne himself was not injured. Neil Francis was called for jury duty on April the 10th. He's trying to get out of that. And Phil Goyette's car was uh, stolen by a holdup man. Somebody held up a, a parking lot in New York and used Goyette's car as a getaway vehicle. So they've had their problems off the ice, too. 9.56 remaining in the second period. Two to nothing to score for the Maple Leafs. A long pass intended for Jeffrey on. Jeffrey on races after it. It's offside. And we have 9.44 remaining. There's no change in the game at Montreal in the second period. It's still Montreal 1 over the Blackhawks. Nothing. I think we can all uh, conclude that Boom Boom Jeffrey on has made a successful comeback for the National Hockey League. 17 goals, 25 assists for 42 points. He certainly has, Brian. He certainly has been the main spirit behind the New York Rangers this season. Both on and off the ice. Here's Ellis over the line. Watched by Ingerfield, number 10. And Ingerfield gets it out to Fleming. Fleming for Nielsen, a two-man break, one man back. Nielsen to Jeffrey on, there's the shot, and Stanley got a stick out just in time as it goes up into the blues. Well, a good play by Alan Stanley. Of course, it's one old campaigner against another with Jeffrey on getting set for that blistering shot of his, and Stanley, who is uh, very adept at getting his stick out in front to deflect a shot, comes his way. Alan Stanley is uh, the last of the real poke checkers. Uh, from the Jimmy Thompson era who used to be one of the very best in the league here's Stemkowski a long pass for Pappen he's getting into the clear and he's jumped by Brown play is going to be called now hold 
holding penalty to Ernie Brown. Arnie Brown lost a lot of weight this year and has certainly come into his own as an NHL or on New York the York Stanley to number four, Brown. Two minutes for Holy. The time, 10.42. We passed the halfway mark in the second period and the game. 10.42, holding to Brown. The Leafs will have a man advantage, six men to five. They lead in the hockey game, two to nothing. Orlan Curtin back with Ken Schinko, Wayne Hillman, and Jimmy Nielsen. Puck goes down the ice. In the lead zone, Larry Hillman, with Stamkowski, Papin, and Hilfrey. Stamkowski tried to shoot it over the line. Wayne Hillman to Orlan Curtin back. Over the blue line for Creighton back. William Schinkle a shot. Power stopped it. Schinkle went to the boards. It poked out to Stamkowski. Up for Papman too far. And that'll be icing. This game is coming to you from Maple Leaf Gardens in Toronto. Dennis Hall has tied the score for Chicago from Esposito and Mackey at 15-18. Montreal and Chicago, 1-1, second period. That's 24 goals for young Dennis. From the faceoff. Here's Schinko. Back to the blue line to Howell. In front of the net. Schinko is still reaching. The puck is still in the lead zone, and Keon brings it out. Over the blue line. Keon a pass from a hotlet. Walton had moved up behind the net. Keon tried to get it up in front. Al McNeil is there. Keon does center it, and it's shot down the ice. 50 seconds remaining in the penalty to Arnie Brown. Mahavlich, Armstrong, Keon, Walton, and Hillman. A pass to Mahavlich. Over the line for Keon. Keon took his shot, and that's why. Hillman getting set. There's his shot. I'm strong with one go. Jackman stopped that. Nevin fell. Mahavlich. Back to Hillman. To Mahavlich. To Keon. Over to Walton. There goes his shot. And Mahavlich to Keon, a beautiful pass, pass ice to Walton, he winds up off the post and in. Mike Walton scoring for the Leafs, his seventh goal of the season. I would say his brief season. <laughs> yes, that's right. Toronto goal, scored by number 16, Walton. Assist, number 14, Keon, and number 27, Mahavlich. 12.32. Well, 32. Here's Ellis' shot from close range, and the Rangers start back again. Over the line. Centering it right in front. Kelly. He's checked. Nielsen is shot. Bauer stopped that, and it's flicked into the corner. Stanley after it. Goes by Ellison down the ice. Wayne Hillman goes back to get it. 6.51 remaining in the second period. Bauer seems to be cut. Here's a pass over to Jeffrey. Shot into the corner. Play is called. And Bauer now leaving the ice. Break. Bauer is cut, Bill. He was banging his stick on the ice, and you can see where he took a puck on the side of the right side of his cheek. He's leaving for the leaf bench. He tried to shake it off as the play moved down ice. Then he banged his stick on the ice trying to get either the official's attention or his own player's attention so that they might freeze the puck or ice it. And finally, there was a whistle and Bauer goes off for repairs. 
That tack is going down to the net, and there's the stop action. That's the puck in the net right after it bounced in off the goalpost on Mike Walton's very hard shot. Terry Sachak is on the ice. Well, there you see him. He is moving around slowly. And we'll see whether he goes into action. Eddie Shack, of course, is uh, always the crowd blazer, is out there, and he's bouncing them off goal posts and whatever else. I would around. imagine that that reaction has to be out of town scoreboard, <laughs> yeah. right? And there it is. There it is. Sam Nikita from Moons and Smith at 17 28. Chicago leads Montreal 2 to 1, second period. Well, this weekend will decide a lot of things, and second place is what they're all aiming at with the extra money and the advantage of uh, home ice in the semifinal series, which opens on two fronts next Thursday. And, of course, with the injury to Bauer, they are allowed to warm up Terry Sachuk, and that's what they're doing at the moment. They're working on Bauer's right eye. It seems to, uh, perhaps to be on the um, eyelid, Brian. However, it's no use guessing until we get a good look at it. That's uh, trainer Bobby Haggard along with the doctor. Still talking about runner-up position uh, in the NHL league. The runners up to the champion, uh, Chicago Blackhawks, will receive 21 units of $1,250. The third place team will pick up 21 units of $750 each. And the team finishing fourth, 21 units of $250 each. So a second place finish means an extra $1,000 per player compared to a fourth place standing. Here comes Bauer. He doesn't want to get out. So while uh, Bauer is being patched up, uh, Sotchuk gets a little work. So do the players. So now then Bauer is being told to release the ice by the referee. They warned up Sotchuk. He must start for a play anyway. Well, that's right. First whistle. Bauer's little angry at it. Naturally, Imlach wants Bauer in there because he's been very, very sharp tonight up to this point in the hockey game. And Sawchuk uh, now he started against Montreal the other night. Terry, Terry was just a little bit shaky. That'll be very interesting to see what happens after the first whistle. Bauer is just standing at the gate. But that is the rule. They're still working on the eye, though, now, over at the bench. They're from the faceoff. Stanley, a long shot. That's wide. Ernie Brown back for it behind the net. A pass to Jean Rattel. Rattel with Jill Bear and Hetfield. Off the boards. It came right in front of the net. Stanley picking it up. Down with Stankowski. Lap it in, and that is offside. And now here comes Bauer. And the crowd reacts to this little maneuver. Call official, of course. It's in the rule book. Bauer comes back into play. Sawchuck moves to the bench. Now we call for Toronto on very number one, Johnny Bauer. Six minutes and 11 seconds remaining in this second period. Three to nothing for the Maple Leafs. Bauer was out of the net. Goes back. Here's Howell with a shot. Hit Stanley. Ernie Brown kept it in. But Colford gets a hold of it. He flips it over the line. Ernie Brown brings it back for New York. Flips it over the line for Joe Bear. And then Kersky stopped in. Clearing it out to center ice. Howell is jammed by Pulford. Samkowski tried to get away, but Howell was able to control and maintain possession of the puck. Just watching Sawchuk skate around and uh, play that uh, those brief moments, Bill, makes me think that this could be the last time we'll be seeing Terry Sawchuk in a regular season game in a Toronto Maple Leaf uniform. All week he's been hinting at retirement next year unless he could get uh, traded perhaps back to Detroit might see him in the playoffs of course but this could be a, his last appearance in a regular season game in a Leaf uniform. Marcel Pronovo to Hillman up for Armstrong for Keon over the line. Keon a backhand into the opposite corner. Mahomet to Keon. Mahomet goes after it and he hit Nielsen. 
Back up for Jeffrey on at center right. A long shot. Bauer caught it. Flipped over to Mahavlich. And to Marcel Kronovo. Gets it up to Armstrong. Over the line. Back to Keon. And he missed it. Fleming. Stopped by Mahavlich. Armstrong failed to get the high pass. Jimmy Nielsen. Over the line. Marcel Kroner will get a piece of him. Armstrong failed to get it out. Nielsen then to Ingerfield. Back to Nielsen. He's covered by Armstrong and Keon has it. Up to Larry Hillman. Over for Mahavlich. He got it back, but there was nobody really in a position to make a play of it. Ellis. Still with him. And finally he lost it to Fleming. Nevin covered by Stanley. Jeffrey got in front of him and knocked it out over the blue line. How old Ernie Brown? Shooting it into the lead zone and it's Larry Hillman back for it. Pass up to Kelly. Kelly and Jeffrey, one man back. Kelly closing in. Takes his shot and that hit Howell. Bob Nevin. Getting away from Jeffrey. Kelly then took it away from him. Centered it. Jacqueline scooped it off to the wing. Ellis then to Kelly. Kelly's trying to center it. Right in front to Ellis. A shot. Another try. And he just failed to find the corner. Back up and down. It goes and then down into the lead zone. Stanley. Nevin stopped him. Harden couldn't get it out, but Kelly was there. Kelly for Jeffrey. He just wraps it down the ice. 316 remaining in the second period. 3-0 for the Maple Leafs. Kelly for Pappen. Over the line. Closing in. Right in front. And Jackman made the save. And Pulford was there for the rebound and failed again. This game is coming to you from Maple Leaf Gardens in Toronto. Curtain back out there with Hatfield and Joe Bear. Demkowski right in front of Papp and a shot is good! And it's 4-0 as we watch it on the instant replay from the faceoff. Demkowski, Papp and Pulford. That big line that's been going so well. There's Demkowski to Papp and right in that upper corner over the shoulder of Eddie Jackman. The Leafs take a commanding 4-0 lead with 2 minutes 56 seconds left in the second period. That's number 20 for Jim Papp. Toronto goal, score by number 18, Papp. Assist number 12, Stankowski. And number 2, Larry Hill. The time, 17.04. 17.04, so Jim Pappen becomes the second Leaf player to hit the 20 mark. The puck goes loose. Made around on the boys. Here's Hatfield with Jill Bear. Stopped by Marcel Cronovo, who whacked it out and uh, down the ice. Wayne Hillman to Jimmy Nielsen. A pass to Curtin back over the line. And Keon is there, number 14. He lost it. And Armstrong fails to get away, but Keon checks Hatfield. Armstrong gets the puck. Backhands it into the Ranger zone. Andy Brown bringing it back. Stopped by Armstrong again. Hatfield stepped into Armstrong, and Ernie Brown is coming up now with Bill Bear. It's tipped at the blue line. Keon coming back. Over to Mahomet. Closing in. Here's the shot. Mahomet missed a check from Hatfield. Back up comes Jill Beer. For Curtin back, stopped by Mahavlich to Armstrong. Back for Mahavlich. Took his shot. Jackman just got that on the short side. Earl Ingerfield to Jeffreyon. Over the blue line to Fleming. Back to Jeffreyon. Trying to center it. Horton has it. Up for Keon. And Mahavlich on the left wing. Shot out over the blue line. A minute remaining uh, in the play second period, and it's 4-0 for the Maple Leafs. 
Well, there's the puck in the net on the stop action playback of that goal by Jimmy Pappen. As you mentioned, his 20th of the, of the year. Bill, for a while, we didn't think any Leaf would get over the 20 mark this year, but Ellis has 21. Now Pappen has 20. And between periods, uh, Ward will be talking with a couple of Russian students about hockey in Russia and other matters, and also we'll have a playoff preview featuring some of our best friends in the business, hockey writers from the fourth estate. All set to go, 59 seconds to be exact, remaining in this second period. Goes over here to Larry Hillman. Over the red line, he lifts a backhand, and that is offside at the blue line. And that's when where the linesman really has to see it, because it's 50 feet in the air. Well, like Jackman <laughs> showed a good glove hand, and, you know, spring training's underway in Florida after the season, who knows? On the face-off over on the far wing, Marcel Pronovo. Larry Jeffrey was skated off. Wayne Hillman moves up at center, then he takes a long shot. That's off the target. Ron Ellis. Right on a Jeffrey on stick. Jeffrey on covered by Kelly. It goes loose. Off the board for Wayne Hillman. Larry Jeffrey got a piece of it. Now here's a chance for Jeffrey. Trying to feed Ellis. Ingerfield takes his shot. Bowers got it in his pass. He even took his glove off to make sure he got it out of there. He thought he might be called for delaying the game. But that could be dangerous too, Brian. Taking your glove off. Somebody else gets a hold of him. Well, Johnny lost a glove in Montreal the other night, and he I think he got a bruised hand on the play that followed because on the next shot that he stopped, he certainly wrung his hand on the play. What a competitor he's been down through the years and this season uh, despite injuries playing tremendous hockey when the chips are down. Demkowski, Pulford and Pappen. It goes to the blue line. Arnie Brown couldn't keep it in. Pulford races down the ice. Closing in. Oh, the puck just bumped up in the air at the last second when he was getting ready to shoot. He couldn't believe it. And it just got away from him. Demkowski offside. There's a real odd one. Well, that, you know, some of the old-timers looking in will say that's the way it used to do in the days before artificial ice. And you can go back to the Ottawa Silver 7. I remember one early reading about a Stanley Cup game once where they lost the puck. It fell right through the ice in the days of natural ice. Well, that and snowstorm played that way. There goes the bell to end the second period. And the score at the end of the second period, Toronto Maple Leafs 4, New York Rangers nothing. Scores are coming thick and fast out of Montreal. The Canadians have scored. Charge from Cornwallier, and it's 3-2 to two now in favor of the Blackhawks over the Canadians in the final period. They're past about the four-minute mark. We're just starting now this final period as the Rangers and Ingersfield. A long shot deflects to the corner. Armstrong off the board. Horton with Keon. Mahavlis is racing down this left wing. Over the line. Mahavlis right in front of the net. And Mahavlis just failed to get that pass from Keon. Got down the ice. Horton is back there fast to touch it. And that is icing called against the New York Rangers. Well, Mahavlis certainly burst in there like a streak to get in front of Eddie Jackman and almost tipped in that pass for another goal. Toronto Maple Leafs four, New York Rangers nothing. Horton from Stemkowski in the first period. Mahavlich from Hillman and Armstrong. Walton from Keanu Mahavlich and Pappen from Stemkowski and Larry Hillman. Completing the scoring. Toronto outshot New York 16-11 in the second period. New York outshot the Leafs 14-8 in the first period. Fleming gets it out oh, to center ice and Marcel Pronovo to Kelly. He wraps it in. Ernie Brown behind the net. He shot it up to Fleming for Ingerfield to fire. Jeffrey handed it to Brown to Fleming. There's his shot, and Bauer stopped that. Another shot for the Rangers. Ernie Brown couldn't keep it in. It's offside. Schinkel taking the pass inside the blue line. 
kidding Reg Fleming before the game tonight, Bill. I, I said, Reg, doesn't look like you're going to get over the 20 mark this year. You've got 15 goals, 16 assists. He says, listen, I have 50 goals this year. Counting practices and <laughs> exhibition games. Well, he's back in the lineup because the last time he sat with us and before the game as he wasn't in the lineup. It's Kelly. Stopped by Wayne Hillman. Shot into the way he leaves on. That's Bauer leaving it for Larry Hillman. Off the boards, Kelly, along with Ellis, takes the pass. Jeffrey closing in. There's a shot by Ellis. It was deflected by Jackman. Marcel Prunamo had moved up. Goyette to Donnie Marshall. To Nevin. Up at center. Here he comes to the leaf line. Shot it over. Ellis stopped it. Gets it out over the blue line. Rangers trying to get it back on side. They do and shoot it in. Marcel Protovo goes back for it. Lost his stick. And it's Hillman now for Jeffrey. Nevin fell. A long pass to Kelly. With Ellis. One man back. He closing in. Going shoot. Jackman stopped it. Ellis wrapped at it. Went in the board heavily. As he fell. And it, that hurt. He gets up on his skates. Going over to the bench. Demkowski jumped Nevin. There's going to be a penalty there. Demkowski. And Nevin gets up rather slowly. There goes Demkowski to the penalty box. And while we're watching him, we'll keep an eye on Ellis to see if uh, he's going to be all right at the leaf bench as he went heavily into the boards behind the New York goal. Looks like he'll stay there and be okay. We're out of penalty to number 12, Demkowski. Two minutes for triple. The time, 2.14. Dion out there with Armstrong, Stanley, and Horton as they shoot the puck down the ice. Hatfield, Joe Bear, Curtain back, Jeffrey on and Howell. Hatfield down the left wing, over the line, stopped by Armstrong, Horton gets it out. Howell then to Jeffrey on, over the blue line. Back for Jobert. Howell couldn't keep it in. It's offside. Called by the linesman. Now, now then, the Canadians have tied the score. Cor Cornwallier from Bellevue at 12.49. It's 3-3. Chicago 3, Montreal 3. And the face-off. Howell shoots it into the leaf zone. Bauer stopped it with a stick. Horton around on the boards. Armstrong shot it down the ice. Jeffrey on to Gilbert. New curtain back. Curtain back coming down the right side over the blue line. Stopped by Keon. Horton off the boards and down the ice. Harry Howell for Rod Gilbert. Gilbert to the leaf line, stopped by Stanley. Jeffrey on now, flipped it over the line, and Ellis, who's back out there now, shoots it down the ice. Jeffrey on coming back for New York, hitting a four-man rush. Hadfield and Curtin back. Curtin back the pass, gets through the fence, right foot to Gilbert. Oh, and Bauer has a hold of that. Gilbert coming awfully close there as he was set up beautifully and once again Bauer played it like a great competitor he is. Watch it closely now as Gilbert gets loose. Bauer comes out to block the angle and then smothers the loose puck as Gilbert tried to break loose and get it into the open net. Now set for the faceoff. They've just flashed up the 3-3 three -three tie on the out-of-town scoreboard. Here's a chance for the Rangers. Nielsen lets one go and hit Ellis and Jeffrey. Out over the blue line. Pass to Ellis. Ellis takes his shot. Jackman stops. Coming up now for Ingerfield. Gets it back to Nielsen. 
Horton Tecum, Stankowski is on the ice. Larry Jeffrey. To Stankowski. Stankowski ran into Nielsen. Throws out over that blue line. And Shinko and Marcel Provo to line. Tap it up there with Stamkowski. They tip it out to center ice and Wayne Hillman. Shoots it off the boards. Stamkowski took a swipe at it. Missed it. Fleming hit by Stamkowski. Tapping. A long pass for Pulcher. Just failed to click. Wayne Hillman takes a long shot. Bauer lets it go wide. Larry Hillman to Stamkowski. Up at center, a long shot off the board, right in front, and Pulcher went after it. Jackman flipped it into the crowd. Leaves four, New York Rangers nothing. 14:47 remaining in the game. Samkowski gets the draw back to Marcel Pronovo. Took his shot and it's Arnie Brown up to Goyette to Nevin. Nevin back to Brown, tried to flip it through. Arnie Brown turns. Why not a Pulford stick? Pulford coming down the ice, over the line. Keeps it in, a pass the path and there's the pass. He's out in a goal. Watch Pulford now with Stankowski trailing. Pulford wheels and almost is out over the blue line. The pass. Here's Papin turning. And he has goal number 21. And Jeff Papin is getting off the action. Toronto goal shot. scored by number 18, Papin. Assist number 20, Pulford. Time, 5.39. 5.39 is the time of Pappen's goal from Pulford. Horton. A long shot. Jackson has stopped that. Here it to Hatfield. And Hobbridge. After Hatfield, sent it out. He got it one goal, and there's going to be a penalty there to Muhammad for grabbing Hatfield. Toronto penalty to number 27, Mahavich. Two minutes for holding. The time, 6.01. Well, Bill, I'll guess now that Emil Francis would like to have a couple of those goals his team scored the other night against Detroit when they whipped the Red Wings 10 to 5. He could use three or four of those tonight. Very well, good. On the faceoff, it's back into the Rangers zone. That's Donnie Marshall, number 22. 13.53 remaining. The Leafs have a man in the penalty box. Rangers, the man advantage. Six men to five. There's Curtin back, breaking through the fence. And he just couldn't control it. Trying to get it back. Keon watches him. It's dug out by Gilbert. Back to Nevin. Gets it over to Marshall. Vaughn missed it. Hatfield keeps it in the corner. Standing it right across in front of Nick Gilbert. He hit Horton. Now then, Mike Walton. Tried to feed Keon. Curtain back, then to Gilbert, stopped by Ben Hatfield. Behind the net, into the corner, coming out in front, there's his shot, and that hit Gilbert. Centered it, Mike Walton gets a hold of it, backhands it, but not out. Nevin kept it in, but Horton gets a hold of it. Off the boards for Walt, going over the line. Takes his shot, and Jackson makes the save on that. Hatfield comes back. Takes a long shot, high. Off the boards by Walton, but not out. Here's Marshall, a shot, and that is off the tiger. Nevin lets one go, it's back to Marshall. Marshall closes in with a shot, he hits Vaughn. Vaughn shoots it down the ice. 30 seconds remaining in the penalty to Mahavlich. 
Evan coming up out of over his own blue line to center with Fleming. It's offside at the blue line. This game is coming to you from Maple Leaf Gardens in Toronto. It's five. New York Rangers, nothing. Howell moves up, takes a shot. Bauer stops that. Guthrie shoots it down the ice. Jackman to Annie Brown. Now then, Fleming to Ingerfield. In over the line offside. Now a 4-4 tie in Montreal. Estrenko scored to give Chicago a 4-3 lead, and then Ferguson from Russo, and it's all tied up again, 4-4. The puck goes into Ellis. Around to Jeffrey. Up for Kelly. Over to Ellis on the right side. Ellis shot one across the goal mouth. Jeffrey moved up, flipped it into the corner. Jeffrey broke his stick. Kelly covers Howell. Ingerfield to Ernie Brown. Ernie Brown comes out with a pass to Schinkel. Schinkel for Brown. Marcel Cole is right ahead of him without it. Ingerfield takes his shot and Bauer stops that one. This game is coming to you from Maple Leaf Gardens in Toronto. Gentlemen, here are the three stars of tonight's game as selected by Foster Hewitt. The first star, Johnny Bauer. The second star, Frank Mahavlich. And the third star, Orlan Kirtenbach. Well, Foster, I thought Johnny Bauer was simply great tonight. Oh, yes, he played a tremendous game all the way through, but I thought in the first period he was really outstanding because the New York Rangers had a definite margin on the play, and at that time it could have gone either way, and Bauer was the key man, I thought. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, Mahovlich uh, played exceedingly well in the first two periods. Uh, he seemed to be able to throw his weight around quite a bit, and he got that very important goal, that second one, which uh, seemed to uh, weaken the Rangers, and they started to tail off in their play. Uh, Pappen got a couple of goals, but uh, they were after the game had been practically won, I thought. But uh, as for the Rangers, Curtinback stood out as far as I was concerned. I thought he played a solid game all the way through. This is Molson Canadian Maple Leaf Classics on Leafs TV. The Toronto Maple Leafs uh, knock off the New York Rangers by a score of 5-1 to one, and with it move into third place in the standings with one game to go in the regular season. It would turn out you would start against the Chicago Blackhawks, knock off the number one team in the league, and then beat Montreal in the Stanley Cup Final 1967. First Stanley Cup for Mike Walton, the fourth for a lot of those veterans on that Leaf team. Uh, had to be a very special moment as you look back on that uh, that run to the cup. Yeah, it was. Uh, no one really expected Toronto uh, because of the type of season they had. They went through that period of time. They had ten losing games and had a change in coaching and such, etc., etc., etc. So we were sort of the underdogs for sure. And everybody, I think, was uh, expecting uh, uh, Stan Mikita and Bobby Hull and the boys in Chicago to win their uh, a cup, the first cup in a long time. And they, and they didn't do it. Uh, again, it all goes back to, um, I think, two people, uh, plus several other ones, but the two main uh, 
people I think that was responsible for the cup victory was uh, Johnny Bauer and, and Terry Sawchuk. Talk about a little bit about Sawchuk and uh, he had to come on to, to replace Bauer who got injured and in those games in Chicago he was unbelievable. Well they were just, uh, it, both Johnny again, it was just hard to describe how good they played and uh, without them they, they w it wouldn't have happened but I guess it was just meant to be and uh, Sawchuk uh, um, just played uh, just phenomenal. And an interesting character too. He, he was, was a guy that didn't was, say much in the before oh. games and everything. You just didn't want to go near him. No, he was really different, and he was different even from John. And uh, you could sort of tease Johnny a little bit. I remember one of the things with John that uh, he never would let you do, and uh, I used to do it just to bug him because I was, <laughs> you know, I was like that. But uh, I used to, if you ever sh shot the puck and scored on him in practice, and you went and retrieved the puck out of the net, he chased you. He didn't <laughs> let that, but. Uh, but Terry was very odd. He was quiet, 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 and uh, he really didn't know what he was thinking. And, and a lot of goalies, I find, that, uh, that are like that. And there are a few forwards that you have to uh, wonder what they're thinking, and well, you're one of they, them, that's my friend. When, that's why they I used to room with them all the time. I used to room with the goalies. That's right. Michael, we want to thank you again for taking Great. some time out to come and visit and uh, look at a couple of games from that 1967 run that went on to the Stanley Cup. It's always a pleasure to see you. Thank you. Mike Shakey Walton, and we've taken him back to a couple of dates in the year of 1967, and we've enjoyed every minute of it. We hope you have, too, on Molson Canadian Maple Leaf Classics on Leafs TV.